the atomic model of argon. Let's see. Well, this is lithium, six lithium. This is a proton, a neutron. Only difference is one of the electrons is sticking out a little. Those are my atoms, and there you have argon. One valence up, one valence down, and there in the middle, two times eight valence makes 18 valence. That's all. Not that complicated at all. Uh, argon is made out of uh, different uh, nucleons, uh, two kinds. Uh, of course, nothing is black and white, but we have these protons and these neutrons and every q-tip represents one of these things you see that every nucleon is made out of three quarks and let's go to investigate the valence of this thing it's based on oxygen which is the second atomic shield over there this little bugger oxygen you can see the flag down four in the middle which leaves us with eight valence uh, how do i um, calculate or establish valence when you have uh, three of these members standing right up three of these members standing right up this one can turn this is a nucleon and they spin that's how gravity it is swimming against the stream of gravitons this spins this is a nucleon uh, a nucleon and it's a neutron you see it's compacted this two this two and in this model I can change it from neutron into proton very easily. The thing is, if you have three of them standing up like here, like those three parts, if this one turns clockwise and it's stretched out, it forces this one to turn anti-clockwise and this one to turn clockwise again. But since they are adjacent, two clockwise adjacent, you see this one will, uh, would swing inside, this one would swing outside, it would collide. So one of those three has to be uh, a neutron. So if you have a three part, two of them are protons, one of them is a neutron. If you have a four part, it's not as an um, even number, not, not that much of a problem. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, anti all four can turn. But in this case, argon is tripods. One of them has to be flagged down, has to become a, a neutron. Well, as you can see in the center, there are the two valences of the first shield. Then you have that yellow structure, which is oxygen, having eight valence. And those eight valence means eight, eight protons turning. Um, this makes a triangle, so this one has to be flag down and this too makes a triangle so uh, those ones are flagged down bottom it's the most efficient way you know nature wants to spin as many um, nucleons as possible and it wants to make it wants to um, turn as many uh, neutrons into protons as possible it's called a neutron decay or proton decay we see with hydrogen it's uh, so an atom wants to be as much uh, energetic as possible. So it will uh, try to seek the maximum number of protons because protons have more energy. They have the same ref count, but a, a bigger circumference, so they have more energy. Well, again, this, this, this is why those tripods have one of those flagged down, bottom and top, leaving us with two circles with eight valence and those two on top makes 18. These two are uh, stationary, they're locked up, they, they do not swing, they do not uh, spin like these. These can spin, excuse me, these ones can spin, so if you, they can spin, no problem. But this one is part of a, a solid structure, but although, but argon is very lightweight, it moves around, so it still has valence. Also, this valence isn't shielded off. You see, all those four over here are flagged down. So they do not stretch out like protons. So they cannot shield off this one. So this leaves us with 18 valence. The fun part, if, if you look at oxygen, you might say, yeah, look, we got those two ones 
as well. So why doesn't Oxygen have 10 valens? Well, as you can see, uh, those four on this side and on that side are protons. So they are swinging out. They are uh, shielding off those two dots. And then we get a little... Whoa, come here. This is... Um, what do you call the thing? This is a third, fourth shield. It's the fourth shield. Germanium. Um, here we get uh, four parts, but some can't turn because those inner ones are turning uh, as protons. So, same manner. But again, here we can see a blue one sticking out on both sides. But again, just as with oxygen, it's some uh, adjacent nucleons are protons stretching out, shielding off. So, this, uh, this atom has a valence of um, 32. Can't have more, it's 32 because of it would be 34 if those two blue ones were included, but they are not because they are shielded off by the adjacent protons. Oxygen, adjacent protons, uh, germanium, adjacent protons, argon, no adjacent protons, so 18 valence. Those ones are the bigger ones. This is a 50 valence, this is called tin. You got your hafnium, 72 valence, and over there, a big motherfucker, the seventh shield completed, and that's uh, curium. So this is how atoms really look like. They have a very local orbits, very local orbitals, uh, spinning around, uh, going in and outside all the time, so creating those standing waves. If you want to impress your teacher, build these things, and your teacher will be impressed, and tell you why. Not CERN, not NASA, not Fermilab. No one on this planet has these models. These are not the Bohr models. These are the Van Kamenade models. That's me, this guy right here. I did it on my own. I uh, deciphered the entire universe on my own. That's my project for this year. Next year, it's eternal life. Bye now.